I lay alone in my bed in the hot summer night, separated only by a thin hallway. I can hear my parents snore in their own room clearly, along with the sound of the occasional car zooming past on the road outside their open window. I could see if I moved my head to look straight out my door. In the long lulls between the zooming motor vehicles, I hear the clock ticking downstairs. One minute, five minutes, fifteen minutes, almost a half hour. We all have them, don't we? Those nights where there's just something that keeps you from drifting off to sleep. Be it the strange sense of dread at the demons your mind insists are watching you in the dark or simply too much energy to relax. With a sigh, I open my eyes. There's just enough light filtering through my curtains to make out the few things here or there, but no details. Light that, for a moment, flickers, as if disturbed by the passing of wings. With nothing better to do but feed my curiosity, I peek through the curtain behind my bed. Nothing greets me but a big raven perched in the old walnut tree in my uncle's field, looking my way. Nothing else in sight, not even the cows. As I close the curtains, I see the shadow once more flicker by. Guess he was just as invested in what was in the house as I was of him, and decided to take flight. Unable to stand the tedium of laying there with my eyes up at the ceiling and dissatisfied with the sight outside my window, I throw off the covers and quietly creep my way towards the stairs as the red glow of taillights briefly passes my parents' window. Old wooden boards creak under my feet as I descend to the first floor for a drink of water. Our kitchen is dark and quiet as the rest of the house, the only light coming from our newer model phone built-in display, and the moon outside. Still, enough light to make my way to the sink and begin pouring some water in a glass. As if on cue, I hear barking from upstairs. We have a lap dog that sleeps with my parents. Little thing barks at anything that moves. In this case, it seems the little raven had decided to blitz the window with the shadow I saw pass by the dining room window, blacking out all the moon's light for a split second. Walking over slowly, I lift up the blinds and peek, up, peek out. Nothing but an empty yard and the occasional car passing by. As I turn away, the room is briefly lit up by passing red tail lights. Slowly creeping back up the stairs, our dog finally stops barking as I reach the top and turn into my room. Laying down in my bed, I peek over to see if I can get a look at what she might have barked at and see a little more light coming through the screen window still between my family and the outside. I slowly get out of bed, creeping forwards. In the center of the screen is a large hole, jagged around the edges. Our dog starts barking again, as I see a red light from outside a window. But this time, it's not coming from the hallway. It's coming from the window behind my bed. Slowly turning around. I walk over to the window and carefully lift the curtain with shaking hands. On that old walnut tree's branch, where the raven had set, I saw something glistening in the moonlight. Something wet and red, black feathers stuck in it. Looking closer at the little hole in the screen in my parents' room, I spy the same substance glistening in the moonlight. Time slows to a crawl. Cold seeps up my spine, 
beats, my heart seems to become determined to burst out of my chest with each beat until that little dog begins to bark again. My room is once more bathed in a red light. Only now, I hear scratching. <laughs>